James Orengo and his MCAs thought they would have a field day in the impeachment trial of CIA Deputy Governor William O'Doole. But they were totally wrong. When it came time for the plenary to vote, this is how it went down. 27 senators from Kenya Kwanzaa voted to acquit the deputy governor and 16 Azimio senators voted to impeach the CIA deputy governor. So basically he'll survive, he'll continue to serve out his term as a deputy governor and what Orengo and his MCS did has been undone. There's nowhere they can take the man. He's protected constitutionally. Now in this video, I want us to critically look into why the Senate and in specific Kenya Kwanzaa saved Deputy Governor William Odole. Because in politics, things don't just happen by mere chance. There's always a reason behind it. And that's what I want us to look into. But before we get into that, let's take a short break. My name is David Wafula. I'm a local political analyst and this is what I do for a living. But as you know, no man is an island. I'm in a literal war with the fake news media and we need you private. If you're a communication, international relations or political science major, and you believe you have what it takes to do what I do, then I need you to do two things for me. First, send your CV to topnotchrecruitkenya at gmail.com. Second, record a two-minute video explaining how Kenya can get out of debt and tag me on any of the following social media handles. Your country needs you private. Adios. So why on earth did Kenya Kwanzaa acquit an Azimio deputy governor who has been impeached by his own MCAs, unanimously I must add. The first reason is that through the stories that William O'Dole has been propagating in the media, TV, radio, newspapers, and even got his chance in the Senate, the main story that he has been propagating is that there is a lot of looting in Siaya County through impressed. It is very unregulated, it's high amounts of money, it cannot be traced, where it goes, he doesn't know. He just knows he cornered the people and they said they take it to Orengo. What Orengo does with it, no one can explain. And that automatically tells Kenya Kwanza that Siaya County is one of the cash cows that is being used to fund Maandamano and it is also being used to fund Azimio rallies. Even to pay some of the leaders who are there because these people don't go there for fun. There is money involved. So it now makes sense to in fact keep this deputy governor there. Because when worst comes to worst, he can serve two purposes in that vehicle called Siaya County. Either he can be the speed governor to slow down this looting and stealing because they can't do it when he's there and he's watching. They'll have to find loopholes and do it in small amounts that will not raise eyebrows with a man. And if he's not going to be the speed governor of that looting and highway robbery, then he might as well be the handbrake. To bring it all to a final close. Because they wanted him out so that they can continue doing what they're doing. Now he's back. And they've seen that this man is crazy enough to go to NTV Direct, Citizen Direct, any radio station that will call him. And even if they impeach him, he'll go to the Senate and sing the same tune. So now they know we're in trouble. And that is why Kenya Kwanza have kept that man in that same office. He is needed there. The second reason for coming to the aid of William O'Doole, this man is now very popular in Siaya County. In the previous county government, there was over 300 million shillings which went missing. Investigation started, but they stalled. But the people are tired. They went up in arms because of the thuggery and robbery that was taking place in the last administration. That is why they chose Orengo. He looks like a lawman anytime he spoke in the Senate, but turns out words can be vapor. He is the one who is now punishing them and they are tired. And William O'Doole has become very popular amongst the people. I saw a poll that came out just the other day. I don't know if it was Mizani or was it uh, IRS. It was one of the polling companies. I would have to check. And they're showing that William O'Doole has popularity on the ground more than James Orengo. Kenya Kwanzaa is not oblivious to that. And because they've seen that, they want to keep this man there, keep him relevant, keep him close to the people, buy him time to win some MCAs to his side. Believe you me, he's now going to be working like this with government. And come 2027, he's going to vie for governor. Orengo automatically will spew him. He cannot use him as his DG again. And Odol won't even agree to be part of that cabal that's stealing. So he is going to vie on his own. I don't know if it's with a UDA ticket, if it's with a Ford Kenya, but definitely he is going to be vying. Personally, I suspect it's going to be with a new party. ODM is going to be dead come 2027. There'll be something else that's been brought about by the likes of Miguna, Jalango, 
and even this deputy governor. And the third reason for acquitting this deputy governor is because his sins are minuscule compared to that of James Orengo. William Oduol is accused of buying a chair for 1.12 million Kenya shillings. He's accused of renovating his office for around 18 million shillings. But that's not even what the Senate found him guilty for. They found him guilty for two things. The first was interfering in uh, procurement processes, trying to get certain companies to get procurement here and there. But when it came to the plenary, they decided that's a nothing bugger. We'll let the guy continue serving. So whatever this deputy governor has done is nothing compared to what James Orengo has done. Even in law, two people can be thieves. But one of the thieves can go work with the district attorney's office and cut himself a deal. He will go testify against this other person, expose all they are doing, save the DA's office a lot of time and money that they would have used just to investigate this other guy. And for that, this person walks. Or maybe instead of 20 years in prison, they do one year or one week or nothing or maybe even a house arrest or a fine. So William O'Doul has cut a deal. He cut a deal with the Senate. That is basically what happened. He went there, exposed the bigger looting that's taking place which definitely catches the attention of the country because that's quite some money. And at the same time, we are seeing that he has his own misdemeanors, but because you've come here to expose what has been happening in Siaya, I think we'll let you slide. That is why the Senate has decided we are giving this man a second chance. Let him go be there. He's our eyes. He's our ears. This is a place where looting has been taking place for eons. And finally, we have somebody on the inside who will not tolerate it and who will bring a huge spotlight to illuminate the robbery that's taking place. And by the way, I said this not too long ago. In, in fact, I think it was less than a fortnight ago that the Siaya County MCAs are shooting themselves in the foot along with James Orengo. This man was moving around exposing what they've been doing in the county. The best thing they would have done would be ignore him completely. Let him keep talking, it'll reach a point, it'll steam down, there'll be other things to talk about like Mandamano, the housing levy, the NHIF uh, levy and all that. But they rushed through the motions, they impeached the guy quickly, unanimously sent him to the Senate. What happened is he went to the Senate to now explain to senators the looting that is taking place in Siaya County. In so doing, the president now fully understands what happened. He has to be briefed on everything and anything. DP Rigadi is also now fully aware of the looting that is taking place. The EACC is now fully on the ground, 100% on the ground, to do follow-ups on what DG William O'Doul has been exposing. CIA is going to be flooded by undercover EACC officers. You might see court orders whereby documents are confiscated and some people are barred from accessing certain offices. That is where they are headed. All they had to do was ignore this deputy governor. If they asked, they just say he's crazy, he's looking for popularity, ignore him but they've given him validation by trying to impeach him. And more so when he has been acquitted, he has come out on top. Now even the small misdemeanors he had done that people were impeaching him for, they can't talk about it anymore because the Senate said that there's nothing there. Leave the deputy governor alone. So we're going to be seeing some investigations. We hope it won't be like the Uru Kenyatta days where people would say we are going to release a report in three months of those involved in Kemsa and they end up resigning without us ever seeing any document. But as usual guys, that's just my opinion. Do drop me your own comments in the comment section below. I'll do my best to read them and to give you a response. And in the event you're here for the first time, please go on and hit the subscribe button. And if you're watching from a different platform, just head on over to YouTube, search for David Wafula, hit the subscribe button and you're going to be getting a ton of content of this nature. If politics is something you're passionate about, this is definitely the one channel that you really, really need to subscribe to. Alright guys, adios. Thank you for choosing David Wafula as your primary news platform. We put countless hours in research, recording, and editing. By showing up each and every day to watch our videos, you encourage us to generate more videos for the viewers. We are on a mission to inform, educate, and build a better tomorrow. To our thousands of followers in a world full of presidents, kings, and queens, you are the real gem. Adios.